So in this week's video I will talk about a shoulder case that you can follow along over on Collective Minds Radiology if you are a Patreon and if you're not a Patreon you can still watch this video here on this like platform on YouTube and follow me along when I scroll through. So in today's video we will have a look at a shoulder case here that is available on Collective Minds Radiology but this is just for the Patreon so if you're not a Patreon you basically can't scroll through these images on your own but uh, you can watch it here on this video. Now let me just quickly show you here uh, basically Patreons have the opportunity to go through some cases on their own before I showed the video also to kind of like train their eye and have a better learning experience than just watching a video here. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, you go over to my Patreon page and you can find the link in the description down below. So currently there are 98 patrons that are supporting my YouTube channel and we have lots of different stuff happening here. Uh, this is just some information. I'm now not locked in so that's why you can't see here everything. And Basically, Patreon is now just a the platform for the support, but the actual magic happens over on our new platform school, which is this one here. So you can see of the 98, 52 members have already registered here. And this is a platform where you can just post stuff and we've got different, you know, uh, categories here. You can basically just discuss anything. You can discuss exclusive videos that I post here and so on and so on. So basically it's a way to interact with each other. Uh, you can ask me questions, you can ask other people questions, you can post stuff kind of like a Facebook group or a private Facebook group but without all the distractions you have on Facebook. So that's why I like this quite a bit. There is even like a classroom here and I can quickly show you this for example the ankle course. Now I call it ankle course, it's not like a structured program but it's basically a collection of all the ankle videos that I have made so far and since there is a lot of ankle videos on my YouTube channel you kind of like have a full course in a sense where you have really coverage of many many important topics as you can see here so I, I made a lot of videos about ankle and you can basically watch it here and then uh, mark is done if you're done and just you go through this so this is kind of like a way a more structured way to go through the videos here. Some of these are Patreon exclusive, so you will not find all of these videos over on the YouTube channel, but here it's uh, for Patreon and you can see here it's Patreon exclusive. So if you're interested in becoming a Patreon, it's very easy. You go over to patreon.com backslash Acton and you can select the membership level here and as you can see it's uh, starting at eight pounds per month. For this you get even a free copy of my book. So I think this is a great value here. The others are obviously more expensive, but you get uh, access to more videos, exclusive keynote lectures, and this one here is maybe a little bit too much of an overkill, so I might remove this one completely. Uh, yeah, because I'm now doing more of this streaming stuff over in the virtual fellowship that I will make a video about shortly. So no, but that's not uh, that's now enough about this. So let's move here onto this case. So this is a shoulder and you can see it's, a, it's, not, it's a kind of like a young patient and he has shoulder pain. I don't think there was a trauma involved or like a recent one, but I don't actually remember because um, I don't have the clinical information. So basically what we want to look at, we can quickly go through here in a systematic way, right? So we start at the top for the AC joint. That's all good there. We have coronals here to check for bursitis which there is no really there's no bursitis you can see there is nothing really happening there and then we can assess the acromion for any kind of like degenerations etc etc so but there's not much happening there then we go over to the rotator cuff we can see the cuff itself looks good there's no tendinosis no calcifications no partial tears no full thickness tears and where is the sagittal here let's pull this one in not this one. Oh, there is no proper sagittal here, just a 3D reconstruction. It's not the best, but we can quickly have a look here. So even here the cuff looks quite okay, all the way down to the superior, like uh, superior 
middle and posterior facet, so one, two, three, and the subscapularis tendon also here looks okay. Okay, good. Then we can have a look at the muscles. So we, for this, we ideally have the T1, we go here, or this is T2 rather. So muscles look very bulky, strong, no obvious edema, and certainly no atrophy here. Always make sure you check also here for the deltoid muscle, there is no strain, nothing. So very strong musculature, right? And then we move over to the rotator interval and we go here and we can see the fat is preserved. No, nothing like frozen shoulder or anything, the ligaments look very smooth. And now we see a structure here which we can correlate now with the transfer section, which is a little bit at a weird position because it's not the short head of the long end of the biceps tendon because that's this one here. Right, so we have an additional slip or tendon or whatever there. So we go on the axials and what we now can see is basically we try to identify the long head of the biceps tendon and it's not really sitting in the groove. There is nothing really going down. This tiny black dot here could be either a part of the aponeurotic expansion. I don't think it's an artery. This is certainly not the proper biceps tendon. So Actually, this is the biceps tendon. So you can see it goes from the anchor. Here it goes outside of the joint, superficial or anterior to the subscapularis tendon down. So we have a medially dislocated long head of the biceps tendon. There is some surrounding edema. So eventually this is a, a post-traumatic condition. Quite unsure though when this happened, as I don't have the history. So it could be a recent injury or um, maybe a chronic injury. We don't know. And then what I think is interesting also is this structure here, which looks like an additional tendon slip, but it goes here into the fascia of the pectoralis major or major, and it goes up here and blends in with the supraspinatus as well. So this is also the aponeurotic expansion of the supraspinatus tendon, uh, of, yeah, of the supraspinatus tendon that's also medially dislocated. So this seems to be very unusual. So normally you, they or both of them go along here in this groove. But then on the other hand, the groove is very shallow and I haven't found anything with regards to anatomy, anatomic variants that you can have a variant like this. I don't think it's a variant. I think it's uh, certainly a pathology together with this edema there. And that's why, yeah, I, I also would report it like this, right? So that's kind of like the, the funny thing about this case, a medially dislocated um, long head of the biceps tendon and the short head is from the coracoid here down this one this one okay and here is a case report and medial dislocation of long head of the biceps without subscapularis tear and if you go back to the case it's the same here the subscapularis tendon is normal so what normally happens if you have a dislocated long end of the biceps tendon you have a tear of the subscapularis it starts at the top and the long end of the biceps tendon kind of like goes inwards a little bit so meaning it starts off with a with a tear at this level and the and the biceps tendon that normally sits here in the groove shows a medial subluxation and ultimately if the tear is complete a dislocation inside the joint but here we have the tendon outside of the joint and the subscapularis tendon looks intact so that's kind of like a um, rare thing and here is a case report that talks about this as well so uh, you know medial dislocation of the long end of the biceps tendon is classically known as a pathognomonic finding for subscapularis tear and here they have a young patient symptomatic medial dislocation with associated posterior instability without corresponding rotator cuff injury and here came with this after okay for quite some time probably some chronic thing and you can see they did arthroscopy biceps tenodesis and was then two years later very good so we let's have a look at the at the thing here so you can i put the link down also in the description of this report and you can see the image here it's the exact same image um, we have a subscapularis tendon which is intact we have the proper supra supraspinatus tendon. Everything is basically normal and the long end of the biceps tendon is not sitting in the groove, but outside. So I don't think it's a variant. Um, I think we would see this more often, although 
yeah, I don't know. If you know that there is a variant, I haven't found anything, please send me the article and I'm happy to make a video about it if it's an actual war variant here. Okay, so whatever, what else did they find? Labrum was intact in this case with posterior instability. Okay, let's go back to the case. So long head of the biceps tendon, some edema around it, medially dislocated outside of the joint with intact subscapularis tendon. And then we move over to the joint and here we can see, first of all, the, the head is a little bit, no, it's not too much posteriorly decentered, but you can see the posterior labrum is also abnormal. We have, if we go here, high signal, maybe tiny ganglion cysts here coming out at this posterior, posterior inferior region, we've got a labral tear. Now let's see whether we can see this on a 3D sequence here, which is big. Here again, you can nicely see the long end of the biceps tendon going down. And here you can see how we have these abnormalities in the labrum here. This is clearly the labral tear with this tiny ganglion cyst here, second cyst here, and small some other cysts. So we have an extensive posterior labral tear. Now let's have a look at the superior labrum. Here the biceps tendon runs over the subscap, goes inside here. There doesn't seem to be a slab two lesion. So it's just this posterior one. And funny enough, you know, these posterior labral tears frequently are seen with this strong person, like very bulky musculature. They do a lot of bench pressing, I presume, and you have this constant pressure from the, you know, if you lift 100 kilograms and, you know, on a bench press, your humeral head is pushed hard posteriorly and this puts a lot of pressure onto the posterior labrum. So this is quite a common finding or combination here rather. And probably also a lot of um, biceps training and ultimately at some point it dislocated out. So since the groove is a little bit shallow, maybe this is just a risk factor to dislocate, um, but could also indicate maybe some kind of like a variant, but the variant would maybe not explain the edema around it. So if you know about the variant there, I'm more than happy to incorporate this. But as of now, I would call this a post-traumatic, maybe like a, from an older trauma, but um, yeah, certainly abnormal finding there. So that's it for this week. I would like to make a big shout out to all my Patreons that are continuing to support my YouTube channel. And if you want to become a Patreon, go check the link down below. And I'm more than happy to welcome you over on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching and see you next week. So before you move on to the next video, I want you to briefly reflect on how much benefit you get out of my videos here. How much of the stuff that I'm teaching you can you actually apply in clinical routine? If you get something out of it, then you could consider to become a patron of my YouTube channel. Patreon is an online platform where people can support other content creators just like me. You can find the link over here and click there right now. Now, there are other options as well. If you really want to go to your next level in MSK, then you can consider to join the Virtual MSK Radiology Fellowship. You find the link down here and also in the description of this video. The Virtual MSK Fellowship is a one-on-one -on -one case based teaching program where I help radiologists to get to their next level by increasing their speed and especially confidence in MSK reporting. So go check that one out.